Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper, and today's job is to make a new cylinder head nut for this five inch cylinder right here. Now, the reason we have to take this project on is because in the northern climates, there's a lot of salt, and that salt gets into everything and rusts it. And in order to get these nuts off to repack these cylinders, you have to generally cut them. Uh, there's just no way around that. They don't come off. Um, it's just that much rust. Heating them doesn't work a lot of times, but if you cut it and just release that tension a little bit, they'll generally turn off pretty good. But as you can see what salt in northern climates does, that's really, you know, there's a bubbled spot of the paint there. So, I mean, it's, it's tough on stuff. So, yes, we get to make a brand new one of these. So we're over here at the 18 inch Monarch lathe and here is the chunk of material we're gonna use to make this new nut. And we're gonna chuck it up, do all the outside and inside turning and then internally thread it. So I'm just gonna chuck it up here in the three jaw on the OD of the, the material here. And we're just gonna face it and then just skim cut this OD because it's close to our finished size already. Looks like I should just take a little bit more to clean that up. Take another 20. That looks a lot better. Now I'll just uh, clean up my inside bore a little bit. Um, actually, I'll run that to size for the depth I need, um, just up, almost up to the jaws. And then uh, we can chamfer the backside here and then flip it over and do the rest of the work. another 50 thousandths to go and then we'll be right at finished size. Now this bore really doesn't matter. Um, it's a wide open clearance. There's nothing, nothing that it has to come up to. So it doesn't need to be perfect, but we are right there by the caliper. If this needed to be perfect, I'd use the inside mics. All right, we'll go ahead and chamfer this end and this, is, this end's done.
Perfect. All right, we'll go ahead and pull it out of there. And then I'm gonna reverse my jaws and grip on the inside. Um, grip with the jaws backwards, grip the outside of this hub, and then we'll finish the length. Cut the uh, bore for the, the threads, and then we'll thread it all in one operation here. Well, I got her all flipped around and cleaned up, and we just put that in there nice and flush, right to the bottom, and snug her up. And we're all good to go. We'll face this side, we'll get our measurement, figure out how thick we are um, and what we need, and then we'll go in and bore this open to the, the uh, thread diameter, and then thread it. So I'm just gonna start by taking some off of the face here then figure out how thick we are. All right, so our original is inch and five eighths thick and we are right now 1720. So we got to take another 95 thousandths off. And I'll do that in two passes. So the next step here is take the boring bar and we're going to plunge in and open this all up on this one um, and we need to go an inch deep so let's get turning on that. Alright so the first thing we need to do is figure out how deep we're going. We're just going to touch off. That was probably about one to two thou. We'll go in an inch. We shouldn't hit anything. With zero the digital readout and you can do that just calculating it with your readout but I'm gonna touch off and I'm gonna take there's zero my readout again I'm gonna take 200 thou depth and feed her in another 200 it's 100 a side then we got a ways to go so we'll just keep taking 200 at a pass so it looks like we're getting close and measure it. Well, that was fun with the chip coming out of there like that. I was, I got a little close. It whipped around and got me. And I was, I was on the hand wheel, just kind of feeding it in that last bit. I stopped a little earlier than I like to. I wasn't feeding as aggressively to break the chip. 
and it's it's bleeding but um, not a big deal just be very mindful of that stuff when you're doing this kind of work Actually, have about 50 to go it's good and hot now I'm gonna let it cool a bit uh, but if you saw I went in on that last pass and then I cranked it out and I smoothed out this surface I always stop about five thousand short of my depth finished depth and then on the last pass I go in that extra five and then face off this internal flange that uh, to make it perfect so we'll let this cool come back and take that last bit out of it and then get ready to start threading all right, so while that's cooling, I'm actually gonna take a thread restoring file and just kind of go around it just to make sure everything's okay. Um, just in case some rust causes some issue or you know, when we, they spun the uh, head off, if it did any damage. And we'll just, just a quick touch up all around. In fact, right here, I felt a little something There, you can probably hear it. All right, so I just got done measuring up my barrel here. I'm five and a half inch for thread, five and a half, 12. And the machinery's handbook doesn't go big enough to do five and a half, 12, but I calculated it out, what I need. And then I measured the diameter on the inside of this nut and it has shrunk over 50 thousandths by cutting it so and I can see quite a difference in this thing um, so when you cut these they do spring shut and that's a problem for measuring but um, just do the calculations by the book and uh, get your minor diameter and then go from there. Well, now that we're all cooled off, let's uh, take a quick pass, figure out where we are and finish up my, uh, my diameter before we start threading. So we're gonna take 50 thousandths because I know I had about 100 to go. We're just going to measure it with the caliper. I mean, this is not that critical. So it looks like we got about 60 to go. And I'll probably just take that in one pass. Let's see where we're at. Oh, perfect. You get a window, a pretty large window on this pitch diameter, so um, we are well within. We're actually on the tighter side, which is which is even better. So, um, but there's there's about eighteen thousandths of window of pitch diameter for this this size thread, and we're uh, at five four fifteen and four ten is on the low end, so we're we're good. Now we can get set up and start threading. Okay, so I got my compound turned around. I'm at 29 and a half, I'll be coming in. And I got my internal threading tool set up. And I'm just going to take that threading tool and I'm going to put a chamfer on my leading edge 
And then I'm actually gonna knock the little burr on the inside of the bore here, um, just to clean it up and then we'll get set up the thread. Okay, now I'm gonna set up my, my uh, threads. And it's a 12 pitch, A, E. All right, and then I'm gonna pick an RPM that I know I can work with because I'm gonna be coming right into that shoulder. Um, I already went in, come up to my shoulder, and then backed it off 100 thousandths, which should give me enough, um, especially with the head of the, the cylinder in there. Um, I should be okay, but I'm going to pick a speed that I'm going to be comfortable with because that's going to be moving pretty quick. That might even be a bit fast. I'll knock it down to 41 just to be... And we'll try that. Okay, so I set up a dial indicator on the, car the carriage here because it's a hell of a lot easier to keep track of that than it is um, the DRO. I'll just touch it off and then I'm gonna zero my compound just because that's a little easier for me to keep track of too. And I'm gonna turn in my compound here, 40. Yeah, that's moving nice and slow, and we'll catch a number as it comes by. And I hope I don't break an insert. Yeah, that was a nice speed. And right there's our first pass. I don't know how well you can see that on the camera. But we've got a few passes to go, but it's already looking pretty good. Now my next pass here, I'm gonna just put a little anchor lube in there, just to give it a little lubrication. Just to protect the tool a little more. I'll take another 10 on my compound. That actually sounded better putting some anchor lube in there. We'll spread that around a little bit and we'll keep cutting. We got a little ways to go yet. When I said that dial moves by real slow at this RPM, that's what I'm waiting for for each number to come around. So that's looking really good. I'm gonna take a few more passes, a few more depths um, with the compound here. Uh, from experience, I know roughly how deep I need to go and then we'll, uh, we'll check it and make sure it fits and then I'll show you how to do that and get it back in the truck so it lines up.
All right, so now that we're at the point where I want to test it, getting the barrel up there is going to be impossible um, just because of the size of it. And I didn't make a plug gauge. But what we're going to do is we're going to put a little spot of die cam on here, a little bit on my chuck jaw so I remember which one I'm lining up with. I'll let that dry. And then I'm going to take my scribe here, lay it flat to the jaw, and make a mark. Now we got a nice mark, and then when I go to put it back in, I just line my scribe back up with my mark and tighten her down. So let's get it out of here and see what I did. See if it lined up. Wow, I actually got that spot on. I won't even have to throw it back up in the chuck. It's, uh, why that's a perfect fit. No rock at all. It turns. That, uh, that's absolutely perfect. Kind of got lucky on that one. I thought I wasn't going far enough and here it was just enough. So there must have been enough damage to these threads from the rust. To make them a little bit looser. I probably should have measured over wires just to double check everything, but um, we're still okay. Lots of, lots of good grip on this thing. All right, well, because that thing came out stupidly perfect, I'm still going to show you how I did would have done this otherwise. You basically clean off your jaws 100%. Make sure you're absolutely clean. And let's see if I need to move you a little bit so you can see that. And you lay the scribe up there. Rotate it, use it as your pointer, put it right on your line, and then tighten your chuck, and just double check it, make sure it didn't move. Spot on. Then you won't be off at all, if, if much at all, on your next pass. It's lined up where it needs to be, and it'll cut that, catch that thread almost perfectly on. You won't have to reset and try to catch it. So. Now let's get this thing out of here, get over the bridge port and do the last two, two features this thing needs. All right, well the first thing I need to do here is edge find and uh, get my back jaw, make sure it's right on where it's supposed to be by the DRO. And it is, it's still accurate. And then we'll get my uh, side stop here, this, uh, the go stop from Go Manufacturing. This thing is absolutely awesome. And that one is still, still spot on also, perfect. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and set this in the vise to start with. And then one really thing cool about this go stop is it's very accurate. So I can slide it out like this and it doesn't lose its position. This, this arm in the back here is affixed and it's in line perfectly. I'll just snug that up, slide our, slide our nut right up to it, clamp her in, and now we can easily locate the two pinholes wherever we want them. Probably we'll go here and here. All right, I got my whole location right where I want it. And I'm just going to bring the drill down until it touches, back it off a little, and set my quill stop. Then we'll go ahead and start the mill up, bring it down tight to the stop, and I'm going to come up until it touches. There it is. And then I want to go 7 16 deep, 437 thousands. That comes nowhere as near to my 5 8 thickness, but uh, gets me right where we want to be. Okay, now I'll we'll just put a little drop of anchor lube on there and go ahead and drill that. This is for the spanner wrench.
And then we'll bring it over to the next hole. And then just a real light chamfer on these. And she's all done. Well, there you have it. Another, another job done. And uh, I'll get this all strapped to a pallet, shipped back to the customer so they can finish putting it back together, get it back on their equipment. Um, you know, this is what we deal with in these northern climates. The salt is so detrimental to everything. Um, like I said, in different climates, you could probably spin this thing off by just throw a spanner on there and twist it right off. But up here in the northern, northern climates, with all the salt they put on the roads, this stuff rusts so tight and you just cannot get it off. I mean, owning a torch is an absolute essential in these climates and that don't even do it for, for stuff like this. Is that moisture and that salt creep down into these threads and it just, it just makes a mess. Um, the, the really bad ones are when you see an aluminum nut. Uh, those are horrible because the galvanic corrosion is just insane. Um, we've had them where they're an internal uh, thread in piston and I've had to machine the piston out of it. Um, either cut the end of the barrel off, pull the rod out or you know do something to that effect but then machine the whole piston out because it's just a powder in there from all the the corrosion from the salt and the water. So that's the kind of stuff we deal with up here. So with that, I'll end here. We'll get this boxed up and shipped back to the customer. Until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.